How to make moonshine whiskey. Moonshine life recipes. Whiskey has been warming the hearts of cowboys, billionaires and everyone else for hundreds of years. From the contents of the moonlight legends to the best of whiskies, whiskey is definitely a pleasure for everyone. However, before embarking on your whiskey making journey, you should be aware that making whiskey at home is illegal under federal law. Federal law states that it is legal to have a distiller, regardless of size, but that it is illegal to distill alcohol unless you have a federal fuel alcohol permit, which would be the one you would request as an individual distiller or a distillate. Spirits allow, which is what big companies like Jack Daniels apply. 4. State laws vary on the subject of distillation and ownership of stills. You should do an internet search for your state's laws before you start distilling. Your whiskey. Part 1 of 4. Making the mash. Put 5 kilograms of whole corn in a burlap sack. It may seem like a strange thing, but the corn needs to germinate and placing it in a burlap sack will help in the germination process. Once all the corn is contained in the burlap bag, cover the bag with warm water. You can do this by placing the bag in a bathtub or large, super large bucket. Place the burlap bag in a dark, warm place. You will need to keep the corn moist for approximately 10 days. Check for sprouts in the corn. When the sprouts grow to one quarter inch in length, the corn is ready for the next step in the recipe. Remove the corn from the burlap bag. Wash the corn in a tub, making sure to remove any dirt along with the corn sprouts. If your corn has roots, rub them. 2. Move the washed corn to your main fermenter. Use a stick or similar object to crush all the corn. This is called mashing. Make sure that each kernel is completely broken. When you are sure that all grains are cracked, add 5 gallons of boiling water to the puree. Mix the boiling water and mashed corn. When the water cools to 86 F 30 C, add a cup of champagne yeast. Mix the ingredients. Heat 6 gallons of water to 21.1 C 70 F. When the water reaches the desired temperature, Add 7 pounds of rye grains, 2 pounds of barley and 1 pound of malt. Mix all the ingredients together. Increase the temperature while stirring. You will have to constantly stir the mixture. While stirring, increase the temperature of the puree by 5 degrees. Every 2 minutes. When the temperature reaches 160 F, 71.1 C, do not increase it further. Stir the mixture for 2 to 3 hours. You will need to keep the temperature at 160 F 71.1 C for the starch to turn into fermentable sugar and dextrin. This can only be achieved by continuing to stir for 2 to 3 hours. Dot. Filter the water and place the puree in the fermenter. Let your puree cool to 70 F 21.1 C. Add 3 grams of yeast and stir the mixture well. Part 2 of 4. Fermentation. You can use a funnel to pour the puree into the fermenter of your choice. Many home brewers use glass bottles, which are essentially large glass bottles. You can often buy them with an air lock, which you will definitely need. You can also make your own air lock. To do this, drill a hole in the stopper or the bottle cap exactly the size of a surgical tube, which you will also need for this method to work. After drilling the hole, place the surgical tube in the hole, leaving the other end of the tube hanging from a glass or jar of water. Seal your fermenter. After adding all the puree and yeast, you will need to seal the fermenter with a decompression chamber so that absolutely no air can enter or leave the fermentation device. The fermentation process involves the sugars in the mixture, such as glucose or fructose, being converted into ethanol and carbon dioxide. Let your puree ferment. The length of time you must leave your puree will depend on the recipe you used. It can be from a few days to more than a week. For the corn whiskey recipe listed above, 
Let your puree ferment for 7 to 10 days. For the rye whiskey recipe, let the puree ferment for 5 to 7 days. Dot. Learn how to know when your mash has finished fermenting. There are several ways to find out if you can safely remove whiskey from the fermenter. The best and most accurate way to know if the fermentation process is finished is by using a densimeter, although you can also do a visual inspection. Using a water meter, water meters measure the density of a liquid compared to the density of water. When the wort finishes fermenting, the number reading on the densimeter should remain the same. You should read it once a day for three days at about the time your recipe says your mash should be fermented. A good way to use the water meter is to take a sample of your puree using a wine thief or a turkey paste. Place this small sample in a graduated cylinder. Lower the hydrometer onto the cylinder and rotate it gently to release the bubbles. Take a reading at the liquid level. This reading must be the same for three consecutive days. Try a visual inspection. It is recommended that you use a densimeter to determine if your wort has already fermented or not. However, if you really don't want to buy one, you can try to do a visual inspection of your fermenter. Inspect the upper outer edge of the fermenter. Is there a bubble being formed? On the day that you notice that no bubbles are forming, give it another day to ferment the puree and then move on to the distillation process. Part 3 of 4. Distillation. Find out what it means to distill your whiskey. The distillation process focuses on the separation of ethanol alcohol created in the wort. Fermentation process are used wort. The goal is to obtain 80% ethanol and 20% flavors and puree water. Buy or build your distillery. For safety reasons, it is generally in your interest to purchase a copper or stainless steel distiller from a distillery company. There are many websites that offer quality photos for purchase. If, however, you prefer to take on the construction project for your own still, you can learn how to do it here. Transfer the fermented wort to the distiller. Fermented wort is referred to as washing. To transfer your clothes, you will need to strain or siphon the clothes using a cotton cloth and then to the distillery. The cotton cloth is necessary because you want to allow as little of the largest pieces of puree in the distillery as possible. If you choose to siphon the wash instead of straining, try to leave as many of the solid pieces at the bottom of the fermenter as possible. If you end up with some of the bigger pieces in your still, it won't be the end of the world. You can leave them there. Assemble the rest of your still and heat your clothes. You will have to assemble the rest of the distillery according to the instructions provided with it. Again, if you made your own and want to consult WikiHow's instructions, click here. Once the rest of the still is in place, slowly warm your clothes. If you heat your clothes too quickly, you can burn them. Over 30 to 60 minutes. Bring to a boil. Read the thermometer near the cooling condenser. In your distillery, a thermometer must be placed well before the cooling condenser. While the wash boils, keep an eye on this thermometer. When reading 120 F 140 F 50 C 60 C start the cooling water for the condenser tube. This will start your distillation process. Throw the head out. After adding the cooling water, the condenser will begin to drip. For a 5 gallon size wash, you will want to throw away the first 50 milliliters 1.7 fluid ounces 1 quarter cup that come out of the condenser. This first part is called the head and it is methanol that comes out of washing and boiling. The head has an unpleasant taste that you won't want to mix with the rest of your whiskey. Move on to the body. After throwing your head away, read the thermometer. Again, the reading should be 175 F 185 F 80 C 85 C. At this point, the 
distillate that comes out of the distiller is boiling ethanol, or, body. This is, the liquid gold you've been waiting for. You must collect the body in 500 milliliter 16.9 fluid ounces containers so that you can control your product. Throw away the tails. When the temperature reaches approximately 205 F 96 C, you will want to stop collecting the distillate. The liquid that now comes out of the still is called tails. This will also give your whiskey a bad taste. So keep it separate from the body. Let it cool and clean it well. After collecting all the distillate, you will need to let each part of the distillate cool. Be careful, it is very hot. As soon as it cools, clean it well. Part 4 of 4. Aging and Bottling. Dot. Select your aging process. Most whiskies are aged in oak barrels. However, if you don't have oak barrels on hand, you can also add oak chips to the whiskey as it ages in another jar or container. Letting the whiskey age will give you that beautiful whiskey flavor that we all love. You can buy charred oak barrels and oak shavings online. If you decide to age your whiskey in a jar or other closed container, you will need to regularly open the jar to allow the alcohol vapors to escape, as they would if it were aged in a wooden barrel, this escaped vapor is called part of the angels. Let your pots breathe at least once a week. If you choose to use a barrel, fill it with warm water first. This will cause the wood to swell, effectively sealing any cracks it may have. It is important to do this, or the whiskey may leak from the barrel. Let your whiskey age. When making whiskey at home, the aging process takes much less time than commercial distillers, as you are undoubtedly making a much smaller batch of whiskey. Because of this, your whiskey is more exposed to wood from the barrel or splinters, as there is less liquid vying for a stain against the wood. Your whiskey will age in a matter of months. Try your whiskey every few weeks. When you age whiskey at home, there is a chance that you will overload your liquor to avoid this try your whiskey once every three weeks determine the alcohol content of your whiskey and dilute as needed Two. determine the alcohol content of your whiskey abv you can use the distiller water meter remember that a whiskey with 75 to 80 percent alcohol will be a relatively unpleasant thing to drink in general whiskey is diluted to 80 tastes or 40% alcohol. To dilute, add water. Bottle your whiskey immediately after diluting it. Once your whiskey reaches the taste and color you prefer, it's time to bottle it. Store your bottled whiskey, or enjoy it immediately, the choice is yours. Enjoy. Moonshine Life Recipes.